Good evening, Stevens Point, and welcome back to another episode of the Sports Hub. I'm your host, Will Haraldson, and alongside me are my partners, Ashton Parker and Brody Kupski. We have a lot to unpack in today's episode, like UWSP men's and women's basketball, pointers hockey, and the new head coach for the Wisconsin football team. All of this and more when we return. Now for your UWSP athletic updates. The UWSP men's basketball team took one on the chin this past Saturday as they were handed their second loss of the season, falling to Calvin University 61-50. After a strong first half that saw the pointers shooting 52% from the field and take a 31-27 lead into halftime, the offense just faded in the second half as they only scored 19 points on 31% shooting. Three-pointers ended up in the double-digit figures in the scoring column. However, pointers really struggled to get the off offensive rebounds. On the game, the pointers got three offensive rebounds for zero second-chance points. Um, well, guys, credit Calvin for making a really solid second half, time, half adjustments. But what can Stevens Point do to right the ship and get ready for their next uh, game that they have against UW Stout on Wednesday? So the way I look at it is that, you know, rebounding is very important. I noticed that when they were playing State Olaf, they had not the greatest rebounding, so they need to improve on that. Um, you know, they play a tough, uh, tough opponent in Calvin University who actually beat Stout by 13 earlier this season. So uh, I, I don't know. I guess just rebound better and uh stout's really gonna be tough i mean they got a lot of guys that can play well brody fox from stout is insane i mean he, he scored 70 earlier this year so like he's gonna be tough to stop but pointers just got to play good basketball and they'll and, find and a way to win we talked about it a little bit ashton stevens point obviously went over last year in the WIAC in the regular season and then they picked up a win in the first <laughs> week of the conference tournament against stout um, so is there anything that that's kind of sticking in Stevens Point's mind that we got a win here already? Or is that more of sticking in Stout's mind that you guys ended our season early? I think it might be sticking more in Stout's mind because, you know, you go into the tournament, you know, you're playing against the last seed in the tournament. I think, I think there's only six teams in the conference, I'm correct. So you're the three seed going in and you lose and giving them their first win of the YX. So I think... It definitely is sticking more in Stout's mind. However, I think Point is just a way better team this year. They just look more confident. They look better. Their shooting is better. Yeah, they had one bad half, but they were on a four-game win streak and got as many wins in that win streak alone that they did the entirety of last year, including the postseason. So I think, you know, there's it's going to be a really interesting game, and I think this game especially is going to be is really going to decide how the season is going to go for both these teams. So what do you guys think has been the improvement that – has gotten them to the four game win this early in the season. Obviously there's a lot of basketball left, but what makes this team different than last year's squad? I think it's just guys kind of stepping up and like playing their roles like Jake Buchanan. I mean, just had a game winning shot against WLC. I mean, a huge shot and he's really improved on his game. He's shooting threes left and right and drilling them and just being an all around better player. Um, and just guys kind of stepping up like freshmen stepping up you know, Josiah Gilly, I mean, he put up 14 against Calvin, and, you know, he's only a freshman. He's playing his role and does well at it. Yeah, without question. But this is where things get interesting. They're going to get right back into WIAC play. Like we said, an area where they didn't win a game last year in the regular season until conference tournament-wise. But, you know, what can they do to set the tone here early in this game against Stout? Because they're going on the road up to Menominee. A place, like we said, they won last year in the conference tournament, but they lost both games last year in the regular season to UW-Stout. How can Stevens Point get out and set the tone early? I think the biggest thing is to focus on what they do best, and right now I think the best thing that they're at is their shooting. You know, they've been quite solid. You know, as you said, in the first half against Calvin, they shot over 50% from the field. That's always a great sign to see. And against um, um, uh, WLU, uh, where Jake Buchanan had that shot, uh, three-point shot, you know, they they picked it up in the second half, uh, they shot much better overall, and was able to make a really great comeback. So I think it's just keeping that, and, you know, you know as Brody said earlier, you know, when we're talking about improvements to this team, I think one more important thing we have to mention is the depth as well. They had a, got a lot from the transfer pool, and, you know, the overall depth just feels a lot bigger. As you said, you have people, uh, guys playing their roles as they should be, 
And you know, it's just another one I want to mention right now. You know, Miles Coleman came from the transfer portal and instantly has made an impact. Uh, has double figure points in a couple of games right now. So you know, I think just overall, just keep doing what they're doing right now because obviously it's working. Yeah, and Steven's point, this just has a different kind of feel to then to last year's team. Like you said, incredibly deep when it comes to like bench play and all kinds of players that can contribute to a team. But really, their first test of the year is going to be this Wednesday against Stout. And, you know, if they can pick up a big-time W there, who knows what this team can do uh, in the WIAC this, this season. The UWSP women's basketball team continues their great start of this 2022 season after they picked up a big-time win against Lakeland University 68-42. to The Pointers had four players in double figures, accounting for 45 of their 68 points. So, Brody, a very good team effort by the Pointers. What has been the key for the Pointers' early season success? Because they have been shooting the ball really well here to start the season. I think just what you said, just shooting them well. I mean, that's kind of helping their team. I mean, looking at some scores from the past few games against Lakeland, 68 to 42. I mean, putting up points when they need it. Uh, 83 to 51 against North Central College. I mean, a huge win. That's, I mean, that's a good margin. Now, they did lose by 5 to uh, St. Norbert, which is not great, but... Still a tough opponent to play against uh, at at home, but you know they're playing well. They're they're playing together and just having a lot of success this year. Yeah, and if you remember that that game against St. Norbert, we actually had here on SBTV. It was a game that Stevens Point led for three uh, for three of the four quarters that they played. It just took a furious comeback by uh, UW or excuse me by St. Norbert in the last minute or so that got them that win, but. You know, looking back at it, you couldn't really ask for much more for this women's basketball team for Stevens Point. They have started the year as as good as they could have possibly imagined. And the preseason, obviously, they haven't gotten into a lot of the WIAC play. That's what they'll do this Wednesday as they host UW Stout in Berg Gym. We're going to have that game for you here on SBTV. But, you know, like a lot like the men's basketball team, this will be their first test. If, and Stevens Point picked to finish at the bottom of the WIAC in standings. Um, in the season, but if they're able to pick up a win against UW Stout, I think they're going to start changing the minds of people of maybe this team's legit. Uh, I obviously, and I think you know there's a couple reasons why you have people had them as bottom of the preseason. I think the biggest one, obviously, is the head coaching change, um, going from the winningest uh, YA coach of all time in uh, Shirley Egner to a brand new head coach is obviously going to be a really rough transition. However. You know, the girls' uh, late pointers have been just absolutely dominating, showing that it doesn't really matter. You know, they're fitting with the head coach. You know, it doesn't matter what the head coaching change is. And it's just been working out really, really well. And if they can get a W against the EW Stout, I think that just shows nothing but positives for the future. Yeah, and for a new head coach, like we were talking about, Shirley Egner, the head coach, the winningest head coach in not only Stevens Point, but WIAC women's basketball history, that transition from a coach of that caliber to a new coach that can always be difficult but if you're a stevens point fan you got to be pretty happy with how your team has been able to make that transition yeah no doubt i mean it, it's like we said it's it's tough to go from the winningest head coach in the WIAC to you know a new head coach and clearly the new head coach is really showing out as you know the girls only lost one game this year so uh it's looking really well for them and uh from what I heard, UW Stout women's basketball is kind of underrated, so they might have a challenge playing them. But uh, the way that pointer, the pointers have been playing this season, I feel like they have a good shot against them. I think we're in for a really exciting broadcast. That's on Wednesday. You can tune in to here at around 7 o'clock this Wednesday, November 30th. The Pointers hockey team has found their mojo. After starting the season 2-1-3, and three, the Pointers have rattled off two straight impressive wins over WIAC opponents, defeating UW Stout 3-2 and Northland College 5-2. For some reason, Stevens Point just has Northland's number. Over the past four seasons, the Pointers and Lumberjacks have played each other 10 times in both the regular and postseason. And in those 10 games, Stevens Point has an incredible 8-1-1 one one record over that span. To say the Pointers have owned the rivalry over the past two seasons would be an understatement, but that's besides the point, guys. You know, what has been this turnaround for Stevens Point as really it kind of started with that stout and continued on against Northland. What has been the turnaround? 
So really, it's been a big turnaround considering this season's not been the greatest season for point of hockey. I mean, four, one, and three is not the record we'd like to see, but a great win against Stout goes a long way. And obviously, I mean, like we said before, they beat Northland in the last 10 games. They've won eight of them. So it's been really well for them uh, against Northland. So no surprise there that they won. Yeah, and if you look at the broadcast that we, we had for you last time, it was obviously we had the Thanksgiving break. Not a lot of activities happened over that. But looking at this Stevens Point team, they were down early to UW Stout. And Stout kept, it was, a, it was like a boxing match. Stout would punch, and Stevens Point would counter punch, and Stout would have another one, and Stevens Point had two haymakers in a row, and that put it out. But for Stevens Point, it's what, like you said, that is a massive win against Stout. And, you know, the one area we were talking about, Stevens Point has been bad at the power play all year. They're getting better at it. But one thing they have been incre the best in the country at is their penalty kill. They are just incredible at that. And they have shut down every opportunity that they had. And against Stout, I think that was going to be their biggest test because Stout had some of the best conversion percentage in all of the WIAC, let alone all of Division Three hockey, in the power play. So, you know, what a big win for not only Stevens Point's morale, but you know, maybe momentum going forward. But now they got some big tests here. They got UW River Falls, who's right now at the bottom of the WIAC, but the WIAC is always strong in hockey. So you're gonna get a big fight every night. And then you follow that up with Superior, who is at currently in first place in the WIAC, uh, three points ahead of Stevens Point. It's nine to three. So big opportunity for Stevens Point this Saturday, Ashton. Yeah, and I think the main reason why they've just been having that success recently in the WIAC is with that stout win, you know, I feel like they have been finally starting to get their groove. They've been figuring out, they've been gelling together because you know, they lost a few pe few key pieces over the off season with, you know, just people, you know, graduating, leaving, um, and just not being eligible anymore. So I believe that stout win allowed the confidence for this team to absolutely just skyrocket and really just show people that this is Stevens Point Hockey, and no matter how badly you count them out, they will always stick in there. And if they can just get a couple wins versus River Falls and Superior you know, this weekend, that's going to be, I think that's just going to be a good sign of things to come over this year. Yeah, without season. question. If they're able to pick up two wins this weekend, that would set up probably the biggest matchup in all of Division Three hockey next week as the Pointers will take on UW-Eau Claire, who had just swept the then number two team in the country, St. Norbert, a team that Stevens Point uh, had some trouble with in the beginning of the year. They tied one, lost one. But you look at Eau Claire, that's a team that came into KB World Arena last year in the Wyatt Conference Tournament Championship game and thumped Stevens Point. You know, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but if you're the pointers, you really can't help but think forward at that because you know this weekend is a big opportunity, but you've got an even bigger one next weekend. Yeah, without question. I mean, like we said, you just got to focus on the games this weekend. Obviously, they should be able to beat River Falls pretty handily, but can't I always say that because you know what will happen. <laughs> um, but you also got to play Superior, who, you know, you had success against them last year, but they also were pretty tough in the WIAC tournament uh, last year. So they're looking to, you know, come back against Point and hopefully win against them and kind of solidify uh, their spot as top of top of the Wyatt Conference, but you know if after this weekend, then you could start really focusing on Eau Claire because Eau Claire, I mean, right now is probably their toughest opponent this year. So what can Stevens Point do this weekend um, to really improve that offense? You know, over the past two games they've had eight goals, which is phenomenal, but they've also given up two in the past two games. They had gave up two to Northland and they gave up two to UW Stout. You know. We, we did that game against UW Stout, and there were some laser passes that just sneaked by Ryan Wagner. There was really not much he can do. But what else can Stevens Point do to keep that momentum rolling, to keep going and uh, just go into the games to be their peak team? Because I don't think they're there yet. I think this team can keep improving. Obviously, any team can keep improving. But I don't think they're where their peak is yet. What do they need to keep doing? I guess just stay confident and play well. I mean, play part of hockey like it has been the past, past few years now. You know, just play together, hit your shots, and just play part of hockey. Yeah, and 
that momentum is always something that's huge for Steve, for um, for any team. Um, but and it's a lot something a lot like the basketball team. This is a really deep team for Stevens Point. You can really all kinds of line changes always and instant impact by every player. Um, but you know, Ashton, you've you've watched the games as part of the pep band. Um, things seem like momentum is going in favor of Stevens Point, and it's just an exciting time to watch them because they're starting to get their groove back. Yeah, you know, it's a great time uh, to be a Pointers hockey fan, and uh, I haven't been able to watch the past couple games. I haven't been feeling the greatest recently, but you know, just looking at the stats and just looking at the overall feeling and uh, increased positivity towards the team, that's always just a great thing whenever. You know, you're on a team and you know that the fans have your back. That can do wonders for a team's confidence and a team's overall play. So, you know, just keeping that, trying to ride that momentum as long as you can, even if you're going to take an L, because they're bound to take an L at some point, I, I would think personally at least. But if you can just try and keep that momentum as much as you can, just so that when you take that L, you don't lose it as much, that's the key point. Yeah, they're not the uh, 2019 team that went 29-0-2. Um, but, you know, this is still a good team, and like I said, good to see you back alive and in the flesh. Here. I try. You try, you try. Well, that's going to do it for our UWSP Athletic Updates. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have some regional sports action. So don't go away, because we'll be right back. Community Studies is a program for people who love to tell stories, whether that be in written form, visual, or audio. Media Studies is exciting because it's always fresh, it's always new. Media is at the center of everything we do. More and more people are asked to engage with media and use media. Our program really provides students with skills and techniques to be better prepared for that in the future. We offer courses in media production, both video and audio, nonfiction and fiction, music production, journalism, film studies. Media studies is a great way to get hands-on experience in the field that you're looking to do. They teach you the basic concept behind everything and then they tell you to go do it. We really pride ourselves on thinking of a wide set of opportunities that we can give our students. Your student organizations are a great asset. We have SPTV, the uh, student television organization, 90FM, the radio, and The Pointer, our student-run newspaper. It's a great way for students to get involved learn skills that they need for class, and meet new people. Some great facilities where our students can hone their skills. There's a giant studio in the center of the comm building. I've had quite a few classes in there. A lot of our classes are very hands-on. They're very interpersonal. You're getting the skills that will allow you to create your future, and I think that's what makes it a truly amazing experience for students. There's an incredible range of options for graduates. We've had students go out and become independent contractors, work for radio stations, newspapers, with TV stations. Everyone is different, and they have their own unique style in all the classes and all the student organizations you get involved in you have a lot of flexibility to really create your own work and do it in a way that means something to you. We're excited to see what students are making and what they want to make and how we can help students get from where they are to where they want to be. I'm in a video production class that's teaching me how to film documentaries. I'm also in a screenwriting class and I get to learn how to write movies so I'm doing all these different cool things and I love it every day. Welcome back to the Sports Hub. Well, for Wisconsin Badger football fans, it was an emotional roller coaster of a weekend. First, the Badgers lost the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe for the second consecutive season, but the very next day, Badgers fans were treated with former Cincinnati Bearcats head coach Luke Fickle being named as the new Badgers head football coach. This was a massive home run hire for, the athletic, for athletic director Chris McIntosh as Fickle turned Cincinnati from a 4-8 football team to a college football playoff team in four seasons. Over Fickle's tenure as the Bearcats head coach, the team never had a season below nine wins. So guys, this is a big time hire for Wisconsin. What did you make of the move? So when I first saw it, I'm like, wow, that, it's, it's great because... You know, Luke Fickle has really turned around since then, kind of looking at some stats here. He started kind of his head coaching career at Ohio State, uh, went 6-7, and seven, lost in the Gator Bowl. I mean, obviously for your first time, it's not going to be perfect. Then he kind of took a hiatus as head coach. He was defensive coordinator at Ohio State for a good while there, um, but then picked it up in 2017 in Cincinnati, went 4-8 and eight his first season. Not perfect, but... 
still first time being head coach uh, since 2011. Then, you know, the last few years now, 11-2, and 11-3, 9-1 in 2020 because less games. 13-1 um, this past year and 9-3 and this season. Uh, his bowl record, I mean, 2-3, and three, not fantastic, but still making bowl game is pretty tough to do. Uh, so it, it's a good hire. It'll bring a lot, maybe it'll bring a lot of transfers in, bring a lot of recruits into Wisconsin, and uh, hopefully it's, it's going to look good for the future. Yeah, not to mention, you know, he was the first non-Power 5 head coach to get his team into the college football playoff um, in, Cincinnati, in Cincinnati two years ago when he had, obviously, Desmond Ritter, who's currently in the NFL. Um, but, you know, Luke Fickle, he was on that team with Ohio State in 2014 that won the national championship. He's a coach that has been around winning his entire time. And right now for Wisconsin, after a 6-6 six and six season, that's not Wisconsin standard. This Wisconsin standard is going to be winning the Big Ten West division, which I, we have a feeling is going to be going away in the next couple of years with UCLA and USC joining the Big Ten. Um, but I feel like, you know, obviously there was a lot of drama with how the whole situation with Jim Leonard went down. There's still, you know, speculation to will he stay, will he leave. Um, but I think that, you know, Luke Fickle is a proven winner, but he can really add some stuff to this Wisconsin program. Uh, no doubt. And... You know, I think that this hire is an absolute, it's kind of a perfect fit for Wisconsin as a whole. You know, you think about how similar the two have been. You know, Wisconsin's known as a fantastic football program that's had, you know, great success in terms of just winning and, you know, in the minor stuff like uh, running backs and offensive linemen, but the main thing of winning. And, um, you know, uh, Luke, um, uh, the, sorry. You're good. Sorry, my bad. I try to get my thoughts together, but. You know, over in Cincinnati, he has, you know, over nine wins. You know, it hasn't dipped over a nine wins since 2017, if I'm correct. And, you know, I think it's just they both work well together. And one of the big things that Wisconsin needs is transfers and recruitment as, um, you know, for the future. Because you have top people like um, Braylon Allen, who's you know, not going to be around for forever. So, you know, recruitment's a big thing. And if he can bring over some, you know, top recruits, that'd be absolutely wonderful for just uh, for the Badgers program in general. And I think the thing that really stuck out with me with, um, with Luke Fickle is obviously we talked about him being kind of like a defensive-minded coach, but also over the past couple seasons with Cincinnati, he's kind of kind of changed to being an offensive-minded coach. And really, that's what Wisconsin has needed over the past couple of years. Their offense has been really stagnant, and their defense is, you know, at the top of the Big Ten, but they can only do so much for you. If your offense isn't putting up points, you really can't do much. And obviously we saw in that loss to Minnesota, the offense had chances to put the game away. It was up 16 to 13 with the ball. They could have gone down the field. You, I mean, you never know what could have happened. Um, but Wisconsin, a few games this year, bad offensive performance costed them. them. And you know Luke Fickle should be able to turn things around. And like you said, that transfer portal that's going to be big, and obviously the new NIL things. And you know what's interesting is going to be, can the Badgers get Jim Leonard to stay? Um, it was a really, it kind of blindsided. I think it's fair to say it blindsided all of us. We didn't know that Luke Fickle was even in the conversation to be the next Wisconsin head coach. We kind of all thought it was done deal that Jim Leonard was going to be at. Now, if you're thinking of it, you want to keep Jim Leonard, but what is the realistic? What is the realistic chances that he does stay? I would say if they could just convince him enough to come back, he might. But like we said, he might not come back. Maybe he'll go to the NFL and find a job there. Like I kind of suggested he should just go to the Packers, replace Joe Barry's defensive coordinator, and we'd all be happy Packer fans. But uh, As Badger fans, too, he'd stay in the state. Exactly, that too. And, you know, you would love for that to happen, but I, I have a good feeling he's not going to stay at Wisconsin. He'll try to find a head coaching job or defensive coordinator job, whatever the case may be in the NFL, and probably have a lot of success there. Yeah, without question. Good for him. Go and try and catch a bag, you know, in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, always. You always want what's best for them, and maybe it's not here in Wisconsin, and you just hope the best for what Jim Leonard has done. I mean, he's been about as good as a defensive coordinator as you can ask for, and you can hope just nothing for the best for the guy. 
Now onto our favorite segment, which is our rank-up segment. A reminder, that's when we go around our table here and share our top three moments from last week in sports. I will start, and then we'll hand it over to Brody, and then Ashton will finish things up. So for number three, I'm going to go a little bit of oddball here. I'm going to go with Nebraska beating Iowa. Um, Nebraska finally getting a win in football. They have just been in all of these close games and have had their hearts broken over the past couple of years. And Iowa, with everything to play for, they win, they go to Indianapolis, and they win the West. But Nebraska came in there, and for three and a half quarters, they were in control of this. And we're going to let it slip away at the end, but they were able to come up with it, and Nebraska got it done, and they beat, uh, they beat Iowa. Now they have Matt Rule as their new head coach, so maybe things are changing in Nebraska. But good on Nebraska for getting a win. Um, and number two, I'm going to go with the Badgers women's... Oh. volleyball team winning the Big Ten again. Um, this is a team that for four straight seasons have won the Big Ten. Um, dominant uh, volleyball school as we talked about Wisconsin being. Um, they've just been so good. And then at number one I can't help but go with the hire of Luke Fickle. He's, he's, he's such a good head coach and he turned around that Cincinnati program and you know, good on Chris McIntosh for getting on it. I, obviously we hope that things work out with Jim Leonard but you know, good on Chris McIntosh getting things done, and the future looks bright for Wisconsin. Brody. All right, so I'm going to start with number three being uh, Wisconsin Badgers men's basketball really showing out the season. I mean, starting out 5-1, and one, uh, it's been really good. They realistically should be 6-0, and oh, but we won't talk about the Kansas game, how the guy was out of bounds, clearly. What? What the? But... Uh, they take on Wake Forest uh, this Tuesday, so it should be a good game, and uh, hopefully the rest of the season is looking pretty good for them. So good job, ba Badgers men's basketball. Uh, my number two, I will say, is Jordan Love coming in late in the game for the Packers against the Eagles and really showing out. I mean, you know, when, I, when he first came in, I was just watching. I'm like, if he doesn't do well this drive, I'm just going to turn it off. And then he just showed out and, like, why wasn't he in earlier this season? Why wasn't he in, you know, he should have started the game. Sent a message yeah. to the group chat. You're like, why wasn't he in yeah, earlier? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He went six for nine, 113 yards and one touchdown. I mean, Rodgers went 11 for 16, 140 and two touchdowns and two interceptions. But Jordan Love looked really, really good in uh, when, he, when he was in. So, you know, that will raise some questions the next few weeks. Maybe you should start him. Who knows? Could be the case. Hopefully it's the case. But uh, nice job, Jordan Love, for stepping in. And my number one will be the Michigan Wolverines beating Ohio State. Uh, it, it Basically, this game, I, I was just like, I don't really want either team to win because I, I don't feel like either team is really that great. But uh, I, I'm happy that Michigan won because I'm not the biggest Ohio State guy. A lot of people said Ohio State. Well, exactly. Um, so they they played really well, and they, they really showed out, and I think they have a pretty good shot at being the second uh, seed in the college football playoff. But it, it raises some questions. Maybe Ohio State will drop. Hopefully they do because, I mean. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh this tomorrow actually this tuesday when the next college football playoff rankings come out but michigan most likely will win the big 10 championship game against purdue now not knocking purdue but michigan won that game against ohio state without blake corum who is one of the top two heisman favorites to win it all but uh it's nonetheless ashton your turn wrap us up all right uh number three i'm gonna go for uh wisconsin volleyball um uh, wisconsin women's volleyball you know getting that first seed in their, you know, sort of 16 team section. You know, they've just been uh, incredible as expected from the defending national champs. And, you know, they've just been performing at an incredibly high level and it's incredibly impressive to see. Uh, number two, again, I'm also going to go for, you know, it's going to seem like Brody's list, but I'm going to go for uh, Wisconsin men's basketball. I looked, I watched it over, you know, the Thanksgiving break and they just seemed really impressive. Uh, shout out to Connor Isagen, you know, for just absolutely balling out. That dude is looking like to be him, and he's just, he has just that sort of confidence that I feel like 
it just you know makes a star and i'm really excited to see where this team goes absolute crime to get ranked in the top 25 this uh week this ranking and you know number one we'll go for our production team fixing the light back here as usual i swear if this happens again it just just keeps happening we're gonna have like a clip show at the end of this year about all the times these lights just stop working but no for, for number one i'm gonna go for michigan being ohio state you know i I hate Michigan. I hate Ohio State even more. So I'm really excited. I'm really happy to see Michigan win. And, you know, I'm just more happy to possibly see Ohio State now make the college football playoffs. I have my rankings more of spite. Yeah, we'll see how everything plays out. But, you know, Michigan, big time win. A uh, little pretty similar ranking, but, you know, a pretty eventful week in sports. Well, that is going to do it for another episode of the Sports Hub. If you liked what you saw, why not check out the other content we have here on SPTV? And don't forget to tune in to SPTV's live streams of UWSP Athletics. This week, we have women's basketball on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and men's hockey on Saturday at 7 p.m. I want to thank you all again for watching, and we will see you next time.